Welcome to Messy Parenting, a Catholic conversation on marriage and family. I'm Mike Hernan. And I'm Alicia Hernan. And uh, this is a uh, hopefully a conversation starter for you and your spouse uh, about some topics, some things that we have seen or experienced. Uh, we're by far not experts, um, but hopefully we can share some things that will give you some insights, wisdom, and maybe some peace, uh, or at we've... least start an idea where you say, eh, I don't agree with them on this, but... That's We're going right. to do our own way. That's right. So we've been married for 20 years, and we have 10 kids, or over 20 years, and we have 10 kids. That's and right. um, yeah, Ages, and ages so, 2 to 20. Mm-hmm, 2 in college and all the way down to... Uh, our 3-year-old, I guess, now, actually. She just yeah, turned she 3. Yeah, she just turned 3. Mm-hmm. So uh, we want to talk about a, a topic that some of you might be early for some of you, but I think it's never too early. In this day and age, it's earlier and earlier. Yeah, but, and, uh, but dating, dating with our kids, uh, not us dating. <laughs> that's right. But, uh, but Fortunately, we've already been through that. <laughs> that's right. So uh, maybe we could begin with a prayer. Okay, so let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for our listeners. We thank you for their families. We thank you for our teenagers and our preteens and our older children. Lord, we ask that you bless them all and help them to grow in their relationships with um, members of the opposite sex and help us to guide them, Lord, to give us the wisdom that we need to do that. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Um, so uh, we well, have... First, I think we should give our experience. Go ahead. Maybe that's what you're going to do. I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you think? Go ahead. Well, what... Our creds, like our, our okay. Well, sorry. So, so we have uh, we have a bunch of teenagers, right? Um, so we, we have, have beautiful daughters and we, handsome I, sons. Yes, and <laughs> you know, so we have gone through situations where we've um, not wanted someone to date and found out they were dating. Mm-hmm. Um, we have found out through friends uh, and family members that Facebook <laughs> statuses for our children <laughs> changed. Um, and, uh, we recently had a, a little relationship with one of our daughters. Um, I don't know. want to say a little relationship. Oh, well, I, I shouldn't say a little. It, it wasn't a very long relationship is what I, right. I would phrase Well, we have six, we have six daughters, um, four of whom are teenagers, uh, well, 20 year old and then teenagers and then a son who's in college. And so right. we've been through, you know, different dating things. Right. And, um, you know, and our son had a very serious relationship, I would say for about a year and a half. And I think that that was managed well. Yep. And, um. Yeah, so, so anyway. we, yeah, so we've had a couple of our kids uh, as teenagers entering into relationships, mm-hmm. and we've uh, stumbled into some of this and hadn't thought about it, I think, right. with some of them. Uh, thought about it a little bit in the beginning, but I think we've definitely put over the last six, seven years more time and thought into it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably more in the more recent days, and I first want to give a shout out to my brother-in-law, David. Uh, yep. He, he uh, just in spending some time, I've always, uh, I'm, I'm a kind of person, I think we are kind of couple that always looks for insight from other people. I like, feel like talking and learning from others. Yeah, mm-hmm. we always feel like we're always learning. And although uh, uh, Dave is a little bit younger, um, he had some great insight and he spent some time thinking about this. So a lot of this is from him. I found a bunch on some other websites and some just kind of through prayer and what I, I saw as a, a need for. But the most uh, important thing is that we got that wisdom and then tested it out. That's right. That's so right. We've so we've been through, <laughs> yeah, been through a couple kids uh, with, with this. Uh, right approach, if you will. And um, I think just as far as what age we're talking about. Well, I, I want to do a, well, yeah, I guess we can do that first. Yeah. If you so want. just what age we're talking about. Let me just clarify too, that um, I really don't think that it's a good idea for kids in junior high at all to be dating. It's just, it's just stupid. Right. I mean, that's what I tell my girls. I say, Okay, so what is it like dating in junior high? They're like, it's stupid. Right, <laughs> it yeah. really is. Because we, <laughs> we want them to be parrots. We want them to, no. <laughs> but, no, because I want them to, to realize, I mean, because they don't always believe me. But, they, but I think that they have. Like now, after they've gone through it and then looking back, they're like, yeah, that was dumb. You and know? again, everyone on this podcast may have different personal experiences. Uh, we know somebody who... Uh, was dating in high school and ended up marrying their high school sweetheart. And yeah, got I don't. This young. isn't even high school. Um, We're talking about like. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, twelve. <laughs> we have people different. Different uh, people have different experiences and background. For us, we had right. kind of uh, early on said we don't want our kids dating until the latter part of high school, maybe into college. That was what we kind of started out as our kind of assumption. And uh, I, I just remember situations that were coming up, and my daughter seems to forget this now, but I remember her saying to me at one point, um, our, our, one of our older kids, saying, um, Dad, I'm so glad you didn't let us date 
because I see the drama that my friends are going through. Right. And I think there's just something about our age and maturity that at, at an early age, it's just, it's just silliness. Well, one thing that I've talked to my girls about is that if you first, I'm actually the girls and, and Patrick as well, Patrick is our, is our one son. Then our next son is only 10. So, um, so there's a big gap there, but anyway, but, um, but when they tell me like when they're, and I'm talking about that junior high age. So, um, in that younger grades, I just want to like, keep it there. Let's just talk about like, you know, let's jump all over the place. Let's like, so junior high, when they're younger, if they're coming to me and they're like, Oh, I like this person or whatever. I think a lot of times today, kids are automatically jump to, Oh, okay. No. So we're dating. Like we're, and it's usually like over text versus like Facebook. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's It's not, they're not actually, it's meaningless. And so my conversation with them has been. I don't want them to hide it from me. It's not like I'm going to punish you or whatever, but we'll say, so you like girls. Yay. We're that's good. good. You know, that. you like boys. Great. You know? uh, obviously opposite members. Right. Right. Um, and don't mess it up by, by saying you're going to be dating this person. Right. Um, because if you are attracted, you know, for my daughter, you're attracted, you're attracted to a boy. Great. And he's attracted. He likes you too. That's awesome. Right. Just be friends. Just be friends because if you're just friends, then it's not going to get awkward when you don't like each other anymore. Right. And, and actually that's exactly what winds up happening is that, you know, if they, you know, you have certain, I mean, gosh, I was 12, I was 13. I remember those extremely strong emotions, you know, that happen, but they come and go. And so you have to teach your kids, I think, to manage those emotions and not act on them all the time. Even if the world says, oh, yeah, that's what you should do. And that's a status symbol because that's what winds up happening, too, is that it comes becomes a status symbol in school that, oh, they're dating someone. And then girls wind up going from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend. And that becomes part of their identity. And that's so not healthy at that age, at that age. Right. And we particularly think that, I mean, this is maybe true for life in general, but particularly in those early days of of preteen, early teen, Mm -hmm. where they really need uh, same sex relationships that are really strong, you know, good friendships that are strong. Um, And it just builds up their identity of who they are. Right. And it allows them to just be themselves um, Mm -hmm. and and grow in that way. And that's just, I think that's very, very important. Right. Um, And we've always told them, you know, it's, um, and it's not just the not the name, oh, we're dating. It's the amount of time. It's the amount of dedication, exclusivity, all these other things that come into what is really dating look like. Right. So I would say like in that like sixth grade to ninth, almost 10th grade or somewhere around there. I mean, it's different for everybody because kids mature differently. But around that age, you know, until they're like 14 or 15, they really should be, if they like somebody, keep it as friends. It's less awkward. It's a lot more fun just to be friends. And if you like each other, great. Right. You know, just move on, you know, just be friends and, um, and concentrate and spend your energy, your emotional energy towards your girlfriends, um, you know, or your boyfriends, just not boyfriends, your guy, your male companions. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Just spend time with the Friends of the same sex, because that's that's what's most important. Right. So and 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 just as a little again, I don't want to go too deep into this, but you know, again, if we know if we know what dating is, it's been it's investing in a relationship. Like even little things, like I had to keep tabs on. Hey, who are they texting a lot? That's um, true. Yeah. Who are they Facebooking now? It, it, some of these things, like is it Snapchat or Instagram, whichever one that deletes itself. That you know, I can't Snapchat. remember Snapchat. Um, you know, it's like th- some certain things. You technology wise, it's hard for you to keep a handle on it. And again, mm-hmm. we had this whole podcast on technology, but um, but the idea is that you have to be intentional about it because you don't want them to slide into it. They may not be calling it dating. They may not even think about it that way. Right. But if they're investing a lot of time in some relationship. Let's make sure it's bad. You got to be aware of that. Right. So, anyway, so that's the when. You know, when mm-hmm. when are we talking about dating? At least for us, we've found it. It is much wiser to be at the far end uh, of high school, not at the beginning uh, when they're still. I mean, again, actually, people- what I told my son when he was fourteen and he wanted to date this girl, I was like. You can't even chew with your mouth closed. Like, <laughs> I'm not ready to unleash you on the world of women yet. That's right. You know? That's right. That's right. And also, actually, emphasize to him, too, you know, for boys, I emphasize to him, you need to learn how to treat women. I want to see, I will, we will let you start dating people when I see you start treating me 
Um, not that he never treated me with dis- that he treated me with disrespect, but I want to see you opening doors for me, helping with packages, not That's making right. me walk behind you. All of those kind of things. I'm like, when you start doing those kinds of things, then I'll know that you're ready to start dating. But until that happens, you know, like we we have a little bit more formation to do here, buddy. You right, know, right. Before you and move again, on. as a foundational part of all of this, again, I don't, I don't want to go into detail, but we talked about kind of the growing up weekend that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, we we do a certain things that help lay Support foundations yeah. that are hopefully prior to any dating situation, you know, right. so that they understand not just the birds and the bees, but that what we're meant for, how we are made, mm-hmm. how we are designed, and that we've talked about chastity, we've talked about modesty, that these are things that they're not coming up at the last minute, like, oh my gosh, you want to date somebody? Oh, well, we have to have all these conversations. Exactly. It's that that there's a, a whole culture and, a, and, and very thought, it doesn't have to be exactly every second plan, but that we're thoughtful and that we're intentional about that. And I think that's really important because that's the difference between having being like, you know, super like fundamentals about it and be like, no, no dating until you're 16. And then that 16th birthday, that's it. And I'm not even going to talk about it. That's that's not really helpful for kids. Right. But it's more like Mike was just saying, it's creating a culture of understanding so they understand. Well, this is why, honey, you know, because... Because dating in junior high is stupid, you know, right. and because and what does that and mean? Because, and what, exactly, that. why is that? And let's talk exactly. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about your relationships with your friends and how friendships are really important. And let's so they have that understanding, so they can embrace that with full knowledge about themselves, so they can know themselves better and really feel respected. I think that's what kids are looking for. They're looking to be respected, and they want to be treated. They want to be treated like adults. They want to start being treated like adults. And so we start moving in that direction by having those conversations, not just you know, right. bring down a rule. And, and I'm going to bring so. down, you know, so we have a, um, two contrasts. We have the world that's like date whenever you feel like it. Mm-hmm. And kind of a, um, even, even though it may not be a uh, full on for your children, but almost a hookup culture, like a casual, you know, mm-hmm. like everybody's doing it, dating. Um, even if it's not, um, uh, well, what immoral. I see it is it's a status symbol for those right. kids for who are dating, which is really wrong. But then you have a, the, the the counter to that is that some people uh, among good faithful Catholics, among conservative folks, where they react to that and they're like, dating is only reserved for when you're ready to get married. And again, again, just thinking of the timing part, I'm like, I don't think that's wise either because yeah. you know what, dating is more. I mean, dating is in today's culture needs to be more than just now I am finally ready. Again, we'll have people disagree with us and that's okay. Um, but you know, if they're, if they're 21 years of age and they're going on their first date, that may not be right. the most prudential wise place for them to begin that. Um, and, and we'll go into that a little bit more, but I, but I, I think it's important for us to think about this early on. So we kind of have it thought out and the more time you give yourself and think that through, because, um, if you go back to our parents' generation, you know, at least for Alicia and I, our parents, when they were dating, they actually dated quite often. Um, there were, but they weren't very intense. They went and they, out on dates. They went out on dates, right. As they opposed d- to dating. Right. And so <laughs> today we have missed the going out on dates in general to all we are, a boyfriend and girlfriend. And it means what? I'm not exactly sure to the kids today, but in, in our parents' generation, they would go out to the movies. They'd go out to dinner. They would go out to whatever with a mo- number of people. And it was friendship dating and it was hanging Mm. out dating and it was more casual and there was no expectation that this is a lifelong commitment or Or some intense yeah exclusive relationship and and it was it was more uh, peaceful i think Mm. um but you know i don't know less pressure it was it it was a lot of less pressure now i'm not saying that that is the perfect model but i think when when we look at this we have to look and kind of break it down a little bit and say you know there's there's friendship which is the beginning of any relationship and so maybe you're just going out with a group of friends and it's group groups Mm. going out with mixed sexes at what point are your kids ready for that because in the beginning we prefer our kids to be in uh single sex you know for up Mm -hmm. up until kind of early teens mm-hmm. um, to be with just their guy friends or just their girl, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, single sex. But then as they go, the, the kind of group situations that develop. And then if they're going out on a it's date. It's kind of developed naturally. Right. And then there's then there's a friendship date where they're just like, hey, we're going out, we're having fun. Yeah, we're a guy and a girl, but it's not pretty intense. Maybe I like you, but it's nothing mm-hmm. 
intense or serious, but then it graduates and goes deeper and deeper. And much like all the things that we think of in life, in the early stages of our parenting, it's about protecting their innocence. And then it really switches to, you know, developing Christian maturity. And that's where I want to just kind of use this to go in to talk more about dating. Mm -hmm. Anything else with the when or the kind of timing? Well, I think that we've, you know, kind of established the junior high. So let's talk about, so what dating when to not date. So how about when to date? So we'll go ahead and do that part now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for us, we have decided that when they're a, a senior in high school, right? Junior, no. junior, senior high school. Driving. All right. Well, I guess, well, I mean, it, 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 it times <laughs> That's up. That's kind of how that. I yeah, correlate yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So what we've said is that, you know, there are, there are milestones in their lives that we want to attach significant moments to. And when they have the ability and the talent and the skill to drive. And the responsibility. And the responsibility to drive. It's like, okay, this is a pretty serious responsibility that we're giving our children to drive. Um, but it also means that they have some measure of newfound freedom. That's right. And we don't believe that, um, you know, giving them freedom without trusting them mm -hmm. um, is wise. Is, is wise. <laughs> and it's just, it's just you're, you're asking for trouble. And if it's like you, you're, you're going to say, okay, you can drive and we're going to allow you to do certain things. I mean, obviously you want to curtail with curfews and things of that nature. But on the other side, you have to realize we're beginning to trust them with some very serious things. Right. I feel like if I can't trust them to, if I'm not going to, if I trust them enough to drive around, I should trust them enough to be dating somebody. Because the reality is, once they can drive, you don't know what they're doing. That's right. I mean, and I, just to be quite frank, you don't. That's <laughs> you right. know, like you don't know where they are, you don't know who they're hanging out with because they're out there. And I'm not going to, I don't have enough energy and to, be on top of them, be helicopter parenting, be around my 16-year-old all the time. And, and we, I think that's emotionally unhealthy, too. For them and us exactly. uh, to be at that point. So it's like you, you have to b begin building those bridges where you're building that maturity and right. you're building and they're earning that trust and curfews and driving and certain things. And you slowly get to that point. And maybe it's not the first instance to have their driver's license, but it's within that time frame where you're right. realizing it's, it's not good for me to hold back mm -hmm. um, until... Until they're and out maybe. of the house. Because other people say that, you know, we don't want our kids to date until they go to college. And I'm like, they're typically out of your home at that point. Yeah. And they're no longer under your roof. You can't train them then. And, and then you can't have those conversations. Right. And so we have found um, that, that that point, you know, again, where it's in their latter part of high school uh, when they're driving, when they're having other responsibilities, work and other things that they might be doing, that this is a very appropriate time for them to enter into that while they're still under our roof, that right. they can still be under our, um, not only just rules, but just our counsel and our wisdom as their parents. And it actually, it, it's also possible that maybe you have a 16-year-old who you don't allow to drive because you don't feel like they're mature enough. Well, then that's probably, they probably shouldn't be dating either. You know, exactly. it's a kind of like goes together because when they're around, around that time, obviously, like we always say, every it's different for different. everybody. And every family's different. <clears throat> but around that time, they're not only driving, but that's when they can get a job. That's when they have their own money. So it's really like this stepping stone into adulthood. Right. So we, we have taken the tact that that's when it's, a, a, you know, hey, you want right. to take some girl out? Go for it. Great. Some guy's asking you out great, you know, go ahead, go out and go have a good time or whatever. So there's that like friendship dating. Right. Which is more ca uh, casual in a certain sense where it's not very intense and that's fine. Right. Um, but, but as they enter into this, we want to be more intentional about how we talk first um, to our child, to our son or daughter and talking to them about um, their whole life, you know, just looking out because again, we're taking this as part of them becoming more like an adult, more uh, stepping into their mature role as Christians. So this is actually a talk that Mike, you know, has with the kids around right. around this age. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what we what we do is we begin with a conversation about this other person, you know, this guy that they want to date, or this guy that wants to date them, or or girl, vice versa. Um, and we say, well, talk to us about him. You know, one for, oh, okay, backing up just a little bit, um, you know, again, we talked about some of the rites of passage we've talked about. So with all my girls, we go out on a specific date, and I get them a ring, and I tell them, you're, you know, I made it very clear, you're not allowed to date someone or someone to ask you out on a date without my permission, nor in marriage. And this is a ring as a sign both of your chastity and your love, but also that, that I right now am the man in your life. And I, again, I'm, I'm going to gear this more towards the, the women, although it, 
we had the similar because we have more girls than boys. We do, we do. <laughs> but but I mean the same thing goes for a son as well. It's just a, a little bit different. So I'm going to just and actually I did. I will throw in. Yes, you I did. did go out with Patrick, and we had a special um, before his senior year, and we went to dinner and a show basically. And I had a little talk with him, and I said, very, very and I told him, I said, I want to be the first woman in your heart. I want to be the first woman in your heart. And until, you know, the time comes when somebody else takes my place, I want, I want us to talk about that. And I want to teach you how, and I want you to treat me how you would treat, you know, any woman that you love in your life. Right. And just kind of like solidifying that relationship. And it was really great. And I just, I felt very loved by him, um, by my son when we went out and, um, Anyway, yeah, so and, just you, to and kind he of felt very loved. I know that I from him, so. you know, yeah. and, <laughs> um, and and so so we have that as a precursor that they have in their mind, and we've brought it up on other occasions outside of that. But that was what the kind of the more intentional part of mm -hmm. saying, you know, dating begins with our permission, right? And, exactly. Um, and so when they enter into that. They're coming to us saying, hey, there's this boy that's been pursuing me. That's the way it's happened uh, for us because they know that because we've had conversations that it's been part of our family culture and, and, and values. So I, I ask, well, what do you know about this young man? You know, what do you know about his family? What do you know about his faith? What do you know about his character, his values, his, you know, moral, ethical behavior? Where is he going in life? You know, whatever it might be. And. Uh, sometimes they were like, I don't know. And, and I'm like, well, <laughs> go find out. <laughs> then you need to find out. You need to go deeper. This is not acceptable at this point. If you don't know some of these things, mm -hmm. is he a Christian? Does he believe in God? You know, right. is he practicing his Catholic faith? Um, but then from, from that individual, you know, tangible in young man, or again, I want to just keep in the mm -hmm. phrase of talking about it with my daughter, but we, we go through what is real, what is love? You know, and, and, and not like the song from uh, A Night at the Roxbury. Night the Roxbury. Baby, Everyone's don't hurt me. <laughs> Thank you. A little backup singer Picture there. us banging our heads. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, love is not a feeling. You know, all, going through all of those things. And again, I don't want to make it, I think we all kind of get what, what we could unpack with what love really is. Um, and how there's a really higher standard of what love is from a Christian standpoint. Um, but that I think we... We need to understand, again, why do we want, again, this is maybe why we want to date at all. Why we, mm. why we, we actually think that dating for our kids is actually a healthy, good healthy. thing. Yes. Is that because, you know, from the very beginning, God made us for communion. Man was, it was not good for man to be alone. And that idea that we, we are made for love and we're made to give love, that's our vocation. You know, our vocation as human beings um, is to love, to give and receive love. And in dating, it finds the beginning of a pathway towards marriage. Now, not every dating relationship, and I would hate to, I, did, I don't make sure I set that up for them, but that every dating relationship gives us an opportunity to be loved and to give love, to learn about ourselves, mm -hmm. to um, help another person find out more about who they are. Exactly. Because, you know, m many, many of, um, and maybe, maybe in our own family, but particularly in the world, they are starving for love, and they have substitutes. They have shallow examples. They have a culture that has fed them a lot of crap. And our children can be that opportunity and that healing bomb. Um, not that they're trying to heal everybody. That's not why they're in a relationship. But that love really is the most powerful force. Yeah, it's just the fact that relationships can draw you either further away from God or closer to him. There's no, there's no ambivalence there. It's right. either it's a positive experience or it's a negative experience. And I think that... Um, that that's what we want our kids to realize and just realize that, you know, hey, you can be helping people get closer to heaven. Right. And I hope that the person you're dating is doing the same thing for you. Right. And so, and then again, obviously the, the marriage is the, the quintessential example of what right. true happiness um, in the sense of, of self-giving love. Uh, but, but any vocation really is about donation of self. It's about giving yourself away. So we, we talk about balancing three areas in a relationship. We talk about their, their commitment um, their their um, uh, communication. communication and their physical intimacy, and and by commitment, it's it's you know kind of how exclusive, how serious they are in that relationship. Right, as opposed like your early dating stage, or dating in college, or dating out of college when you're really looking for somebody to marry. So those right. are different right. yeah, levels of yeah. commitment. Like obviously. either a friendship dating, more right. quote unquote courting, you're actually pursuing marriage, then engagement. You know, I mean, you go through those right. phases, right? 
Um, but that level of commitment has to be on the same level as your other areas. Um, and they can't, all these three areas can't be out of whack. So you've got your commitment, then you've got your communication. Um, and, and this is one of the things I do spend a lot of time when I talk to, particularly my daughters, but I, I talk to my son about this as well. But, you know, when we go out is just the, you know, guarding your heart. Um, not right. bearing, it's a big deal for girls. Yeah, like cause, and, and particularly in our culture with Facebook and everything else, intimacy has become has cheap has been cheapened, you know. And we need to be able, to, uh, meaning a communication, you know, just sharing your heart with somebody. And and I talked to them about. It. I said, look, the reality is, is in your first relationships, it's probably going to end in a breakup. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you, not that you go into it thinking this is going to be over and end, and all the negatives, if you will, but realize. Don't throw your pearls before swine. You know, don't share every intimate secret because this person, are they trustworthy? Have mm -hmm. they earned your respect? Is there a level of communication that's appropriate right. for the level of commitment that you have in your relationship? Is this information that you share going to be protected? Do you have the protection of some kind of, you know... Deeper commitment. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so again, um, so commitment and communication and then physical intimacy. And this is obviously where many, many of us as parents are most concerned, but it's all three that really work together. And, and, and what makes me crazy, sometimes you watch these shows where it's like these, you see parents talking to their teenagers and the parents are like, even like afraid to ask like, well, are you sleeping together? You know, like, or whatever. It's like, I mean, it's so frustrating because it's like, yeah. you're such an idiot. You're this afraid world. to talk to your kid about this. You're afraid, like, it's something private that you shouldn't go into their lives. Uh, they're a kid, That's you know? Right. Like, you absolutely need to be talking to them about this. And then we as Christian parents, we just can't just be like, well, just be chaste. Well, that's really not helpful. You know, yeah. like you need to be a little bit more specific, a little bit more, have that conversation and don't be embarrassed. Do not be embarrassed to have that conversation because the reality is that you know a lot more about this than that's your child right. does. That's right. So, and we have to be bold and confident in that. Right. And know that we even, and and just for anybody who's had um, uh, failings in physical chastity when you were dating or prior mm -hmm. to marriage or what have you, um, don't let that hold you back from upholding the truth. I mean, don't let the, the, the evil one undermine you and, and think that you can't speak with integrity and confidence about this. You actually have more That's in, right. integrity and confidence, right. I think, because you've had that That's experience right. and you can say, look, I mean, not that you need to tell your child all right. of your secrets or anything like that. I'm not like sure. I, I don't know if that's a wise idea. Probably not. But, um, but anyway, but... But just to, and I actually had said to my, to Patrick at one point when he was dating this girl, I'm like, look, I've been there. I know, I know how easy it is. Right. I know how close you can come. Do not go there. But Mike has like some like hard and fast rules that we've also laid down just to help right. them because they don't know. Nobody That's told right. me don't be kissing in a dark car, you know, at yeah. night in a dark car at like one o'clock in the morning. No one ever said to me, don't do that. That's and right. now, but we say that's our kids. That's right. Like, yeah. Yeah, we've been there. <laughs> we've been there, and it's a really bad idea. That's right. And now, and fortunately for us, we've been there with each other. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, but so, so I mean, again, just tying those three together, and so that they realize there is a progression. And and we talk about once you pass through barriers, it's really hard to unpack that. And we just talk. I mean, and and again, our in all three of those areas, actually. Yeah. But specifically in physical intimacy, Cor correctly. you don't want to. You know, yeah. Once you cross that line, it's very hard to go back with that person, and it's really hard to go back even in the next relationship. That's right. So you want to just go as slow as possible. Right. So. Right. So um, anyway, so so we we talk about those three, and they're you know again our world uh, in the news and the media offers us plenty of examples of of the brokenness that that comes up, as well as even just in friends and um, you know other situations that that come in there. Um, Anyway, but uh, so as as we go further, do you want to be clear about what's acceptable or whatever? Do you want to talk about that now? Uh, sure. I'm just trying to. I'm sorry. Um, it, well, again, one of one of my things that I do, particularly again with my daughters, is talk about the nature of men and our how we're wired. And I, you know, to not. I mean, I think a lot of us guys know this by innate. Um, our own experiences that men are more visual, different things like that. Men are, are more Get turned on aroused, in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and all those different things. And I talk to him about that. You know, it, with 
sensitivity uh, to that, but recognizing it, this is God's design. This isn't like something awful and evil. This is something that's beautiful, but it's, it, it's leading us towards greater intimacy. And so just sharing with them examples of what a man sees, when a, how a woman is dressed. Again, these are conversations mm-hmm. we've had outside of that. But also when you're together, what a man might interpret. And they're also just even on the other side, like emotional things that a woman might be subtly sending clues that a guy has no clue about. Um, and I will, my role in that whole conversation when Mike says, you know, to the girls about, you know, like laying their legs over a man's leg, or a man, right. a boy's right. legs, like, you know, crossing her legs over his. And th- and girls are like, and my daughters are like, seriously? that And um, Mike is like, yeah, that is, do not do that. And my role is to say to the girls, look, I know you don't understand. I know that you um <laughs> you don't you don't understand men i don't understand men you know when your dad says these things believe him because i i am not turned on in that same way but your dad is and we're going to have to believe that he's telling us the truth right and just for them to realize because everybody you know, we're all coming from our own perspective and so we think well i don't think that way so why should this boy think that way and i'm what i'm saying to the girls is boys do think that way you may not understand it but you need to trust your dad when he's telling you these things you need to trust him because he knows what he's talking about so (laughs) so anyway just to kind of like reinforce to the girls i know guys are weird we don't understand them but you need to believe your dad and i think it would be vice versa too you know for a dad to tell his son i know girls we don't we don't we don't get how girls think but believe your mother when she says Girls will get hurt if you do blank. Right. Just and, trust her on that. Yeah, and, and so and so there's this balance in what we're sharing with them, with the kind of big picture uh, philosophy slash theology purpose of of dating, love, relationships, mm-hmm. and all of that, as well as I get into some very specific areas because I don't want them to think, oh, I didn't realize that. Like like mm-hmm. I had no one tell me. Now now we have you know, our good friends like Jason Everett and other people out there talking about theology of the body and chastity, like they didn't when we were growing up. Um, so maybe there's a lot of great resources, today. right? A lot of, lot more great resources in regards to chastity and living a mm-hmm. whole life. Um, but when I was growing up, when we were growing up, that didn't exist in the world. Um, anyway, so, so I do go through some very specific situations that I have personally witnessed and I've learned now through our, our I, have, I have a list of 22. I won't go through, I don't think I should go through all 22 of these. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's... You know, ha- we can put it up on the website. Sure. Okay. Maybe I'll do mm-hmm. that. Sure. All right. Um, but anyway, but but so um, if we look at that, um, we do go through things like, I mean, just as an example, if you're in our house um, and you're watching a movie together or you're anywhere, you're not allowed to share a blanket. Mm-hmm. And my kids are like, what? Who cares? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Things happen under blankets that just wouldn't happen if you're out in the in in, in right. the daylight. You're not allowed to be. You know, we always send in. Um, well, maybe we're giving away our secrets. <laughs> Should we tell all our kids the secrets? <laughs> we have spies. <laughs> uh, anyway, but we send in the ten year old spy. <laughs> that's right, because things don't happen when there are other people watching, and and that's true. And and for a lot of this stuff, it's like it's the hour, it's the time, it's the physical place, and it's the um, you know your s- solitude if you're by yourselves. If you're like the car, for right, example, if you're alone in a car, it's like we say, if you want to talk. In your, in your car, you're not allowed to park anywhere. You can park in our driveway when our lights are on and we can see you. That's that's acceptable. Right. If you want to have can a park private in our conversation. Driveway and talk. That's not a problem. But it has to be in our driveway, right. not in some secluded area. Right. And somewhere. like making out, no, that's just not acceptable. In a and park you anywhere. never ever lay down anywhere right. together. You just don't do it. Anyway, so we're getting very, uh, very. And well, I think that people specific. want that. And like the whole bedroom situation. That's right. You are never allowed. If you're a girl, you're never allowed in a boy's bedroom, even if it's a friend, even if it's a friend and you're just helping them out. Uh, I had a friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine who has six boys, and she's told her boys that, you know, like, yeah, your your friend says, hey, can you come up to my room and help me move something? Be like, no, can't do that. Yeah, and that's a little awkward sometimes, but it's good. It's good for them to get in that habit of, for the boys, no, I don't go into a girl's room ever. Right. So, you know, and it's that, so that's one thing that we'll talk about, um, you know, yes. I mean, can they kiss each other? Absolutely. But not extended kissing. Well, and, and we always, and I say this, you know, holding hands, kissing, it's like, 
and I say this, and I will get into this in a second, but I say to my, my daughters and my sons, if they give permission, you know, mm -hmm. I think that we've lost some of that in our culture today where it's just, oh, well, we're dating. I'm going to kiss you. And, you know, it's I, this, uh, this attitude of possession that right. I do not like at all. That right. is, it's like, no, you know what, girls, your body belongs to you. That's right. And nobody should be touching you without your permission. That's, That's just right. kind of like common. Right. And even I think mostly in our secular world, they would agree with that on some level on permission. I know what's crazy is that it's this whole like my body, my choice. Oh, yeah. Except when it comes to sex, then you should, right. you know, let guys fall all over you. Right. And, and, and doesn't and, make but any then, sense. But then, you know, consent, if you will, is not sufficient. But I want our girls to have that sense. And there are guys that it, it, there is never an expectation that you need to do this. And I want you to have the will and the character and the strength and confidence mm -hmm. to just say no. Right. And, you know, and, and talking to them about if you're ever at a place, you know, again, this is another reason why we have our kids all have cell phones. If they're going out with somebody, I want them to have their own phone to get in touch with me if they ever Absolutely. need to get out of a situation. And Absolutely. we've talked about that. And we've talked about mm -hmm. where problems occur with uh, in, in these relationships with drinking and other things. And it's like, we already talked to them about drinking, but we bring it back in here because the reality is, is that there's so many things that can go wrong right. when they're inhibiting their judgment. And I, I share with them, I said, when you share your heart, it is so much, your, your judgment is more clouded and may lead to physical things when you wouldn't have anticipated it. And so like that kind of, you know, kind of just connecting again, the whole level of commitment, the communication, the physical intimacy, that it's not, it's not just about the physical intimacy, although that's, that's very, very key and important for us. It's about how you share um, those things that will then entangle your heart right. and will cloud your judgment uh, later on. And so that's why you want to be reserved. You want to hold back. You want to guard your heart so you don't go too fast, too uh, too quickly, and that you always want to be con in control. Um, remember the analogy we had in college? Mm -hmm. um, you know, was it the horse? Right. right? So riding a horse. Riding a horse. So the idea isn't that you, um, you don't ride the horse at all. Um, mm -hmm. But it's that, that you ride the horse within full control, that the, the commitment, the communication, mm -hmm. and the physical intimacy are all balanced. Uh, otherwise, you're out of control and running off, and you can't you know, right. you run into the woods, and you're going to get hurt. Right. Um, but you don't want to not ride the horse at all. It's a matter of having all those balanced uh, and in control. And I think that um, the reason that it's important to talk to them about these things is because, like I'll say to my daughters, I want you to be the strong, smart girl. I don't want you to be... The sweet, naive girl. Because you know what? The sweet, right. naive girl who doesn't have these conversations with her parents, who doesn't know about these things, is she's the one that's going to get taken advantage of. That's right. You know? But Ooh. we want her to be the strong... I want her to be the strong, smart girl so she can be the one that's like, yeah, I know what's going on here. Yeah, I know about drinking. Yeah, I know the kids get high. Yeah, I know that guys are going to try to take advantage of me. You know, I'm going to be aware of that. That's right. And keep my guard up instead of just blah, spilling yourself all over the place. Right. Um, should I just keep wrapping this up? Sure. Know? Okay. So, um, you know, and then again, this is kind of the preparation that I do with our daughters. And then we have a kind of a spiritual, you know, little protection for them, recognizing they're entering into a new phase and just to pray with them and to be, mm -hmm. you know, to really recognize this. And also uh, that, that, that quickens and gives us a greater need for prayer. Um, but then when the young man comes over, um, I have a conversation with him. And again, I'm, I'm talking from the girl standpoint. I've never. And had we're talking. Well, we're talking about somebody who they want to enter into like a dating relationship. Right. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Not like just take her out on a date because we've right. done that, and that's just like, oh, just come and introduce yourself. Right. But this is like we want to date on a regular basis, be boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing. And they come in, and Mike has this little talk with them. Well, and also too, we've told all the kids they need to have dinner with our family. And so the, to see the craziness of our family, to see them in our family, and to, mm -hmm. and it gives us an opportunity to get to know that young man uh, a little or bit, a young or a young woman. woman. Mm -hmm. And they also see us, and they see all the people that this person is in relationship with. Um, and so when I take the, again, in the... the typical situation. I've never, I don't think I'd do it with a girl, but with a boy, um, uh, you know, I, I, I want to sit down with him. And uh, uh, again, uh, David, my brother-in-law gave me this uh, great analogy uh, to kind of break the ice and start over. I say, oh, you know, we sit outside. And we're like, oh, is that your car? And yeah. And say, you know, um, how long have you been driving? Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, he thinks I'm asking him because I want to see how safe he is. And how long, have you, how, do you own your car? Is it your parents' car? You know, and so forth. And then would you ever let anyone borrow your car? 
And he says, uh, and in and, and the situation, he's like, uh, I'm not so comfortable with that. And he says, would you let me borrow your car? And he's like, well, if you need, you need to. Like, they were feeling <laughs> nervous. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not looking at borrowing your car. <laughs> I said, but how would you feel in that situation? Would there be things that you would ask of somebody who's borrowing your car? And I said, my daughter is worth so much more to me than somebody borrowing my car. And, uh, and I go through and talk about... You know, and most boys can relate to the whole car analogy, right? And it just it, it, well, it's a perfect analogy. It quickens their their post, and it also is disarming in the beginning that it's not a, a big, you know, um, big deal. And I really, I, I'm I'm not a fan. I mean, I know I, I've joked about it with my daughters about I'll take my shotgun out when the guy comes over, scaring the crap out of somebody, right? And there and there is okay, there is some wisdom to that, but because was, the most boys, if you say. When dad says, I want to talk to you, they're automatically nervous. Shotgun or no. Right. Like, they're right. already nervous. That's right. <laughs> and and, and they're, they, they, they are when I've talked to them, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I think it really is important for us to be friendly, to be kind, to be courteous, to be respectful. And not to be condescending, but to really try to say, you know, I'm treating my daughter with respect. I'm going to treat you with respect. So using that car analogy, I say I want to just lay some ground rules. If, if you are borrowing my car, I'd have ground rules. Doesn't it make sense if you're going to be taking out something that's m- so much more valuable? You know, and so um, so then what I do is I say, well, first, let me d- let me just get to know you. And I ask about their their life, their journey. Um, and I, I ask them about their their faith. You know, what's important to them? What do you, what, what, when you look, and I tied I think I first shared about me and my experience and who I am and what, mm-hmm. what's important to me. And I asked them, what's really important to you? Right. What do you look at? But and I think the important thing, too, is that Mike shared, um, my family is the most important thing in my life to me, God and my family. Right. And so this kid knows you are entering into a relationship with someone in my family. That's right. And I think you don't have to say, you know, I'm going to break your legs if you hurt her. You don't have to say that because just by saying this is extremely important to me. Right. They get it. Right. And, they get and, it. And, and for me, and I'm not saying this isn't for every Catholic, but for me particularly, it's just like my faith and my family are most important to me. So I share it with this young man in a very brief way. Sure. But I, I talk about the sacrifices that I've made in turning down jobs for my family. Mm. I've done different things, or I've turned down political campaigns that I worked on because of my faith or whatever it might be. And, you know, to kind of communicate that and then say, what do you value? So I get to know their heart. And I get to know what values to them. Mm Because I get an insight into, are they a real serious Christian or not? Mm -hmm. Are they really practicing their Catholic faith? Um, But then I go through, uh, very briefly for them, um, you know, the purpose of dating as I see it. And I have this sheet that I hand them. And, you know, I... It's rules. It's rules. It's it's 22 (laughs) rules. But I start off with kind of... That we're going to post on the website. Yeah, I I will. I have to give credit because there are some of these that I stole from a bunch of places online. (laughs) But... um, I believe in copying and stealing everything because <laughs> yeah, I believe that's how we become better parents. And anyway, people can copy and steal from us. That's right. Go on. Have, <laughs> have, have at it. Um, anyway, so, and some of this is from, um, as I mentioned, my brother-in-law, David, but there's a bunch of websites I found as well. But I go through what, what I see dating as, and then I go through these. So expectations are clear. Yeah. And I go through these 12 things and kind of as we talked about, you know, it, it, you know, every time you're on a date, there needs to be a plan and you need to stick to that plan and you need to let me know where you're at. Um, I would always appreciate a call or a text to, to know all that. And I said, it's, it's your job, not my daughter's, to get her home on time if you're driving. And there is no excuse for being late. And there is no, you know, blah, blah. And I go through all and these different things. And let me just things. say that, like, about, like, the whole being late thing. There was a time when one of our daughters was out on a date. They were not home in time. We called her. We texted her. She wasn't responding. And it's, that is the worst feeling. It is so awful. And so. I was up. Yeah. Yeah. And so waiting. Mike. And she was texted, only she was oh, a half hour late, um, but, but still, still that's a lot. Yeah, and um, and of course, or you know, part minutes. of this is getting the cell phone number of whatever young man or young, not really young woman, because usually it's the man driving, but um, the young man who's driving, that's you right. have to have their cell phone number. That's right. Anybody and takes your kid out on a date, you need number. to have you need to have their cell phone number, and you need an adult number because God forbid something happens again, a car accident car or accident, something yeah. like that, you need to have a way of contacting their parents. But anyway, um. But Mike texted, uh, texted the, the guy who took her out on a date and said, I want to talk to you. When they came, Mike went outside, and, and actually the young man came to the door, and, and Mike had a little him. like, hey. What, what the heck? What, you know, not in a mean way, but just saying, look, this was, this was my expectation. So it's like there's these rules, but then there's also the following up with them. Right. 
you and know, it's like anything in life, whether it's at work or anything else, it's just a matter of, you know, you set expectations, but you need to be, particularly in the beginning, you need to make sure that those expectations are clearly understood and being mm -hmm. abided to. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's the, I mean, again, I don't want to go through every one of these rules, but it's important for me as the dad to communicate it to them mm -hmm. as the young man. And according to my daughter, he actually, and again, she may be puffing it up i don't know mm -hmm. but but she said he really appreciated it and he was yeah. looking forward to the con er, has looked forward to it and we've had conversations since and i and i think actually in this day and age again we have to go back to catholic families we yeah. have to be the ones that are making a difference in this world so if your daughter you know for dads your daughter or a single mom can have this conversation with a young man that's absolutely so true. but, I but um but i think that that's important to have these conversations because maybe it's very possible there is no one in this young man's life who's giving him direction that's right and a lot of men young men are craving that At and AR. so this should this would probably be welcomed right. you know and that you could be a positive male influence in um in somebody's life and, and that's a good thing and if you are a single mom out there you've got so many other burdens i would really encourage you to think about finding a man from your parish or a brother or an uncle or mm -hmm. somebody um that can do this because i think there's something powerful about a young man having an older man sit down and talk to them about this yeah it, it, i i think it would be really really hard for a single mom to have that conversation yeah. that i had with with these suitors if you will <laughs> uh these prospective boyfriends and but anyway but 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 i have that and one of the final things i i, I um you're gonna leave you with leave you or leave the young man with mm -hmm. um was you know i i, I kind of read this part we expect you to be a gentleman respecting loving and protecting our daughter at all times she has been well loved protected and provided for since her birth she is pure and has a good reputation and we expect you to return her with the same and mm -hmm. you know there's other little things about Facebook and about privacy and, and sharing confidences that we go through. But all of it ends up with that. You know, we want you to get to know yourself better. And I talked to the, the, the guy and said, look, your school comes before my daughter. Your work comes before my right. daughter because you're at this level of commitment. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want her to distract from you. And I don't want you to distract from her primary vocations right now. Right. And just to be that blunt and then kind of keep up with my daughter. I mean, primarily, it's through my daughter, not through this this young man. Because um, you have to be building your, their whole life, this relationship, everything we've talked about in other podcasts before this, it's building up that relationship with your child. And so this isn't like coming from out of the blue, like, oh, you want to hear about my personal life? That's right. No, you've always known about their personal life. You're always talking with them. You're always, you're communicating with them all the time. And so that's why it's like parenting isn't just, you know, doesn't just start when your kids are going out into the world, but you know, you've had a relationship with them and you've had these conversations all along. And so this is no different from any of that. Right. And so the final thought is if not Catholics, then who, who will rebuild how boys and girls, young men and young women right. are going to be interacting and, right. and relating to one another. That is how we rebuild a culture. That's you right. Know, we, we don't want to uh, be in our little Amish community and wall ourselves off. We want to begin to influence the culture. And these are the opportunities. These are the moments both for our children, but our, in, our, our ability and our children's in, in ability to influence the culture at large. Because I, I really just believe that, that if we begin planting those seeds, um, again, we have a large family. We have 10 kids. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to have kids who are going to have multiple dating relationships. Right. That means that we and our children will influence multiple relationships. How can we do that in a, in a most profound way so that they understand what love really means? And, you know, like I said before, we want all of our kids, we want them to be the strong, strong, smart kids. You know, we really want that to happen. So, um, so that's something that you should be aware of every time you know, your kid is in, re in a relationship because you want them to be the influencer, not the one who is influenced. That's right. And if you have your kid, who we talked about before, like a emotional love tank, when we talked about the love languages. That's right. You know, so if, you're, if your daughter, if your son's tank is full, filled and they know that they are loved by you and by your husband, my wife, by your family, they're going to be less... Um, less likely to go out and be seeking that approval right. from Looking some young man or some woman. You know, exactly, exactly. And they will be able to influence the world for Christ even through these dating relationships, which for us so far, and all of our kids have broken up with the kids that they've been dating, right. you know, it's all right. been good. We've been very little drama so far. So far, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, but and again, we, we, we aren't super far down that path. We don't have any children who are engaged or, or ready to be married. 
Um, but we, we've seen enough of dating relationships right. and, and this is some of our thoughts. And I really do. I, I think dating is, is beautiful. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be scared, but just really be intentional and thoughtful about how you're going to prepare your it. kids. Right. That's right. And there's be never too early to begin thinking about it, no matter what your kids ages are. Um, again, um, sorry, I went a little bit longer, uh, this time. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. Um, if you haven't had a chance, uh, I'd really encourage you to go to MessyParenting.org. We put up a survey there with the Synod on the Family, on the, the World Meeting of Families. We really want to uh, find out a little bit deeper what uh, Catholic families, what Catholic spouses are thinking about some of the, the hot-button issues. And to get some of your reaction, also, that would help us with this podcast. So if you can go to MessyParenting.org, you can also subscribe there or on iTunes or Stitcher for the podcast. Uh, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you.